This is HGT-119 Electricity 2 Motor Controls. We're covering Electrical Motors, Week 6. This week assignment will support the HVC learner to gain knowledge in the different types of electric motors, explain how electrical motor operate, discuss the components of all split phase type motors, discuss the components of a split phase capacitor motor, discuss the components of a shaded pole motor, understand why certain types of motors are used for specific purposes, explain how magnetism affect a motor, understand how a capacitor affect the efficiency of a motor, and understand the difference in capacitors. This week introduction, motors are used in every area of the HVAC field to move air, pump fluids, and to do mechanical work. Therefore, having the knowledge of the operation and purposes of motors are necessary to uh, progress and to proceed into servicing, installing, and replacing motors. Technicians will do on a normal routine basis these procedures and the better they become at diagnosing servicing uh, issues with motors, the better they will reduce time on the job. Having the knowledge of working on and troubleshooting and selecting and servicing motors is important to be a competent HVAC and refrigeration technician. Terms that the technician need to go over this week is in bell rotor, stator, shaft, capacitor, current relay, potential relay, split phase, permanent split capacitor motor, shaded pole motor, and inductive motor. All motors have some components in common with each other, however, by adding additional components to the motor, it can operate more efficiently. The components all motors will have in common are the windings, the shaft, bearings, the end bells, we will discuss each component in the next few slides. In this cutaway, this motor, you can see some of the components that is exposed from this motor being cut open to show you uh, the internal components of it. The rotor is the part of the motor that rotates. It's uh, made out of iron stackings that uh, will receive the magnetic Filled or induce magnetic fill from the stator. So the rotor is the part of the motor that will receive induced magnetic power from the stator and cause motion or turning force. The rotor is constructed of iron stackings that reacts to the magnetic field. The stator is stationary. It's where the windings of the motor is connected to and these windings like will generate a strong magnetic fill and will induce that field into the rotor to cause it to turn. So the motor windings of the motor have the, uh, the stronger it is and split phase motors there are two sets of windings and these set of windings are the start windings and the run winding. The shaft is what um, the, if I say the blower wheel or the pump impeller or the pulleys or shifts will be connected to to do work, the turning action. Also gears and other things can be connected to it also. Some motors have shafts from both sides such as window air conditioners is a double shaft motor. so. One end of the shaft is turning the evaporative fan motor, and the other side of the shaft is turning the condenser fan motor. The bearings. The bearings is what support the rotor, and the bearings can be either sleeve bearings or ball bearings. The heavier duty the motor is, the stronger the bearings will be. So usually heavy duty motors will have um, ball bearings while light duty motors will have sleeve 
bearings. The run windings is the main windings of a motor. It's what does the work while the motor is operating. And it has a strong magnetic fill to keep the rotor in motion. The start windings is the secondary windings and it is used only for a very short time when the motor is running. The start windings receive voltage only during the beginning of the initial start of a motor. Then the start windings will come out of the circuit. If it did not come out, um, the motor will overheat and trip out on thermal overload or on, or on safety. Start windings is like I say has more turns uh, relationship compared to the run windings so it has an extremely high uh, magnetic fill to get the motor and the rotor moving. The end bells is what support the bearings. The end bells also close the ends of the uh, motor up and it supports like I said the bearings but it's also supporting the shaft also and so the end bells are very important because its position can keep the motor from operating correctly or rubbing against the uh, the rotor against the stator if it's not uh, adjusted and aligned correctly so basically inductive type motors are motors that generate a magnetic field and it will be induced into the, um, the uh, into the rotor to cause the rotor to turn and basically when this magnetic field is induced into it cause the rotor to actually become a, a magnetized and then we know in magnetism like poles will uh, repel each other while the uh, opposite poles will attract each other. So when this happens, the rotor is trying to catch up with the poles in the uh, stator. Unfortunately, it would never catch up, and a good thing that it doesn't, because if it did, the motor will stop turning. So there's always losses and things in uh, the motor turning the rotor, and it will always um, lag behind and try to catch up to the uh, the correct pole. So inductive motor operation is basically using magnetism. And showing you a picture of a transformer, but it still works the same way. The stackings in the transformer will uh, concentrate the magnetic field inside of it the coil itself, the number of turns, will give strength to the, uh, the coil, which will create a strong magnetic field. So the more turns it has, the stronger the magnetic field. This is a diagram of a motor. You can see the north pole and the south pole of the stator. The rotor is in the center of it with a coil on it. Of course, this is a DC type motor but the operation is very similar to it and it will try to um, catch up or try to chase the poles. As long as the poles are alternating in current it will continue to follow its poles as it changes. So the, the rotor is always moving in, in through inductance. Inductance is the way that motors will operate. So inductance is the process of inducing a magnetic field into another item to generate work. Electric motor works through inductance because it generates a magnetic field from the stator and induces it into the rotor, which is a iron core. The rotor absorbs the uh, energy from the stator and becomes magnetized. This magnetism of the rotor will allow it to follow the opposite pole of the stator. This is cause motion of the motor. So many type of motors we deal with today is our two pole motors or we can call it split phase motors and basic split phase because it has two sets of windings a run winding and a start winding 
So split phase motors are considered two pole motors because it has a run and start windings. These poles are the most common motors used in fractional horsepower motor, which meaning that the poles um, are and the motor is less than one horsepower. The start windings are used to give the motor extra starting torque during the startup and the running windings are used to keep the motor operating when it's powered up from the power source. So the start windings do not stay in the circuit after starting and reaches normal speeds. So the speed of the motor is really based on their frequency. In the United States the frequency is 60 Hertz. So it's standard. You go to other countries the frequency of the AC power may be different. But the speed of a motor is determined by the number of windings it has. A two pole motor will have a speed of 3600 RPMs while a four pole motor will have the speed or RPMs of 1800. To calculate the speed of a motor you will need to use the formula below. The speed equals frequency divided by the seconds times 120 divided by the number of poles. Multiple speed motors can change its speeds by tapping off the run windings by using only portion of the windings to generate work. The more of the windings being used, the stronger the motor is will to do the work. When a small portion of uh, the run windings is being used or tapped off of, the motor becomes weak and will turn slower than when more of the windings has been used. These multiple speed motors can have up to five speeds for operating blower motors for different purposes. Most residential furnaces used in homes will be a split phase motor, but it will also be a multiple speed motor and will have speeds to control the different volume of air based on air conditioning and heating. So the strength of the motor can be called its torque. So torque is the starting power of a motor. However, the strength of a motor can be determined by the number of turns in its windings. The more turns, the stronger the motor becomes. To give you information about split phase motors and how it operates, and like I say, split phase motors are inductive motors. And split phase because it has two separate sets of windings. And the most common and the simplest type of split phase motor will be a motor that uses a centrifugal switch to take out the start windings after the motor reach up to uh, about 80% of its uh, uh, RPMs, the revolutions per minute. So split phase motors have uh, two sets of windings and they have specific purposes for operating the motor. These windings are out of phase of each other which will aid in starting the motor when electrically it is applied to the, the windings. Being out of phase will allow the rotor to have less distance to travel in this rotation of the rotor to the stator uh, in the magnetic field when it changes. For the rotor to reach the next pole in the stator, the rotor will try to catch the opposite pole of the stator but will not ever find a balance in its polarity. For that reason, the rotor will lag behind the, uh, uh, the change in rotation of the magnetic field of the stator. The purpose of the run windings is to give the motor the torque to overcome the load applied to the equipment being used. The run windings have two sections, the north pole and the south pole. This pole will alternate based on the frequency of the power source. Since the power source in the United States is 60 Hertz, thereby the frequency is 60 cycles per second. What gives the motor strength from the windings is the number of 
turns of the windings. Therefore, larger and stronger motors will have larger number of turns in the run windings. The purpose of the start windings is to give the motor the torque to overcome to start the motor and this uh, torque is only kept during a very short time. So the start windings is very strong and will give the motor enough power and torque to keep it operating when it's uh, in this type of uh, situation. This pole um, will alternate based on the frequency of the power source. Since the power source in the United States is 60 Hz, thereby the frequency is 60 cycles per second also. So since the start windings are designed to overcome the starting torque of the load, it is trying to move. The start windings consume a great deal of energy and it can not stay in the circuit of the motor for a long period of time. The motor will go off on internal overload protection if it is not uh, de-energized or disengaged after a few seconds of operation. Switches such as current relays, potential relays, and centrifugal switches will be used to take out the start windings after starting. The type of switch will be determined by the type of motor and the amount of current draw the motor will consume. Small motors and compressors will use current relays because of its low current draw. Blower motors will use centrifugal switches while higher drawing motors will use a potential relay. Another type of motor will we call a permanent split capacitor motor. A permanent split capacitor motor are more efficient than a normal split phase motor. It uses a run capacitor to give the motor more running torque during the running operation. The capacitor has low capacitance that will allow the start windings to stay in the, the circuit and energize during the running operations. Without this run capacitor with low capacitance in the uh, circuit, the motor becomes inefficient and may not operate. A capacitor ranging from about 3 to 25 microfarads is connected in series with the start winding and remains in the circuit during the run cycle. So the start windings and the run windings are identical in this motor and reverse motion can be achieved by reversing the winding of the two windings or with the capacitors. Just change the capacitor into the other set of windings, the motor will turn backwards. So this is a really interesting type of uh, motor. It's more efficient as it runs because it uses a capacitor by using the second winding, which is the start windings, to power up the motor to give it more torque while it runs. Permanent split capacitor motors are more efficient than basic split phase motors because it uses the start windings continually during the normal running conditions. It uses the start windings and will uh, give the motor more torque to overcome varying loads for some types of systems. You may find uh, this permanent split capacitor motor or PSC motor on many blower and fan type of systems. Therefore, when the load of the motor is increased, the capacitor can discharge store energy to help the motor to operate more efficiently. Another variation of a permanent split phase motor is um, this motor that operates and it can um, operate in a way as a regular split phase motor but of course it doesn't have a centrifugal switch. And it uses a lot of different type of applications like in air handlers and uh, ceiling fans and uh, other type of fan uh, moving devices that where the, uh, the load can vary somewhat. So using a switch, uh, controlling the start windings. Switches such as current relays, potential relays, and centrifugal switches are 
use to take out the start windings after starting the split phase motor. The type of switches will be determined by the, the motor and the current that it will draw. So when we see these type of motors, um, the start windings cannot, cannot stay in the circuit and, and if it did, it would damage the motor. So another type of switch we haven't talked about is solid state type of switches or relays and this solid state control will do the same job of these electric mechanical type devices but since there's no moving parts it's more reliable and has less things to wear out because um, it's all done by electronics so centrifugal switch is the simplest type is mechanical action and basically it use uh, counterweights which uses centrifugal force to cause the counterweights to to move and to cause linkages inside of the motor to engage and to actually open up the windings when the motor reach full speed. As soon as the motor uh, slows down or stop the switch will close again. Current relays are used on smaller fractional horsepower type of motors and compressors. And you find very common on refrigeration systems like dehumidifiers or your home refrigerator or freezer. And this relay is called a current relay because it needs high current to actually cause the switch to open and to close. The way it works, the switch is normally open and it takes high current during the initial operation of the compressor to actually to close the contact to um, send power then it will uh, open again once the motor or compressor reaches full speed so there's a lot of motion going on with this type of relay it's open then it closes then it opens again and by this motion that's why it's only used in very small type of motors because the inrush of current can arc out the contacts inside of the relay so it's only like again it's only used in fractional horsepower type of motors and compressors potential relay are used for larger um, motors and compressors and it's designed to handle higher current. Potential relays are sometimes called voltage relays because it uses the inductive voltage from the start windings to actually to generate a higher voltage than the applied voltage and this inductance will send voltage to the relay coil and this relay coil only senses the higher inductive voltage so this type of relay, the potential relay, is a normally closed set of contacts and it will open once the inductance increase in the start winding. And it will remain open until the compressor is de-energized. Shader pole is probably one of the simplest motors you can find because there's no capacitors, there's no start windings, there's only one set of windings. Shader pole is the most inefficient type of uh, motor also. So it's only found in extremely small type of motor driven devices such as small fan motors you may find in your refrigerator, um, time clocks, and other small appliances, like very small appliances. Um, it's very, like I say, inefficient, but because it's so small and draws so small of current because of its size, it's not really a factor. But to gain higher efficiency, other type of motors need to be used. So the operation of a shaded pole motor uh, basically will use uh, shaded poles with these copper bars on the stator. And this shaded pole will help focus the 
magnetic field in the rotor and will uh, aid in um, operation of the rotor uh, through inductance. So it's very simple and like I say it only have one set of windings it doesn't have no starting components but it's very simple and but it's inefficient. So the efficiency is low and it should not be used in larger systems. Matter of fact, they do not make it for larger systems unless um, they're looking to waste a lot of energy. So the use, again, found in smaller appliances, evaporator fan motors, condenser fan motors, found in vacuum cleaner motors They're used in other type of like time clocks um, and other type of motor driven devices that um, doesn't uh, need much uh, energy to do much work so to summarize this chapter on motors motors are used to make comfort feasible through moving air fluids heat cooling and um, bring of energy efficiency by the type of motor being used. There are many types of motors, but each type of motor will have its own special purpose. Shaded pole motors are the least efficient motor, while three phase motors are the most efficient motor. Compasses are used on split phase motors to make it more efficient. Starting winding should only stay in the circuit on split phase motors for a very short time or the motor can be damaged. Relays or switches are used to disconnect the start windings after starting up the motor. The speed and the strength of a motor is based on the number of windings the motor have. 